For the following Boolean functions, E and F, we're given the truth table for this X, Y, and Z right here. We also have this set of equations for AND gate and OR gate rules, as well as the D Morgan's theorems. And um, this is from a previous video that is not mine, but it can be found in one of the previous video links linked below the like button in the description. Now we need to, for part A, list the min terms and the max terms for each function. We're going to start off with min terms first, and we're going to start off with the function E. So the E we'll say is equal to, and then we're going to have the summation. We are going to have the M. And then inside of here, we are going to have our parentheses. Now the min terms are going to be whenever our function right here has the output of one. Super important to note. Remember that the kind of indexes for these are going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and lastly, seven. So those are the indexes. I remember when the output is one, we have a min term here. So at index one, we have a min term. Index two, we have a min term. That's for those. And then at index four, and lastly six, we have a min term. So that is how we are going to write this. Now, we also know that we are going to have our max term. And so our max term is going to be written like this. I think you put a pi symbol out in front, not 100% sure on that, but I know you have an uppercase M and then inside of here, we're going to take the opposite. So if our output is zero, it is a max term. So the max terms for this is obviously going to be at index zero. We're gonna have one at index three, index five, and lastly at index seven. So we can write these in here like this. And that is for function E. We are going to do the same thing for function F. So for F, we have the summation M, lowercase m, and then remember when the output is one, we are going to have the min term. So we have at index zero, at index two, four, and seven. Next, we need our max terms. So we're going to have the uppercase M, and then we are going to have one, three, five, and six. And that is it for part A. Now we need to list the min terms for the functions not e and not f. Well, to list the min terms for our not e and not f, it's basically listing the not. And we know that not zero is equal to one, and we know that not one is equal to zero. That's very important to keep in mind for this problem, and that is how kind of Boolean operators work. So knowing this, we can just look back at our max terms, and now these are going to be our min terms. If we didn't already solve for our max terms, basically the min terms would now be zero if it's not, because a zero is a one if it's a not, as we've proven right here. And then a one not is equal to zero, so we can't have ones. So inside of here, we're going to have that our e not is equal to the summation lowercase m of 0, 3, 5, and 7. And for our f naught, we are going to have the summation of lowercase m, and then inside of here, 1, 3, 5, and lastly, 6. So that is how you would solve for part b. For part c, we need to list the min terms of e or f and e and f. The plus means an or, and the uh, multiplication means and and. So that's important to keep in mind when you're doing part C. So we have E or F for part C. Inside of here, we are just going to write out our E plus the F, and then we are going to set this equal to the min term, again, because it's asking us for the min term. We're gonna have our parentheses, and now, as long as we have a one somewhere, this is going to be our min term. So we look in the first index, we see that we have a one here, we have a one here, and we have at least one here. We don't have a one in row three. So we're gonna stop at row three, and we're just gonna write zero, one, two. Let's look on. So we have a one in row four. We do not have one in row five. 
So let's write out row four, skip row five and look on. We have one in row six and one in row seven. So these are going to be our min terms. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but instead we have E and F. And so in here, we have the summation lowercase m. Now, both of these have to have a one because an or, it, well, it just means this or that. So only one has to be there. And an and means that both of them have to be there. The only indexes where we have one for E and F is at two and at four. So in here, we are just going to have two and four. Next up is part D. We need to express E and F in sum of min terms in algebraic form. Well, okay, let's start with E. And to do this algebraically, we're going to look at the truth table, X, Y, and Z. And so we're looking at the min terms. That's super important to keep in mind here. So we are only, I will uh, underline this in blue, only looking at the indexes where we have this one right here. So these are the only indexes we will be looking at. And we're using the truth table. So at this first part right here, we have 0, 0, 1. That means we are going to have an x naught, a y naught, so we'll have naughts over both of them, and our z is 1, so we have a z. Then we are going to look to the next one where we have an x naught, we have a y, and we have a z naught. Next, we are going to have an x, y naught, z naught. Lastly, we have an x, y, and then a z naught. So that is the equation for part E. Now we're looking at the function f. Well, f, we are going to have the same thing. And we're going to have it at index 0, index 2, index 4, and lastly at index 7. So when we write this, we are going to have x, y, z, all with knots over them because that's how it is for the first one. We are then going to have a plus x naught y z naught and then we are going to have a plus x y naught z naught and then a plus x y and z and that is it for our part d now for part e we need to simplify e and f to expressions with a minimum of literals so what we're going to do is we're going to take e and f and we're going to just simplify them we're going to start out with e so e is equal to, and instead of writing this out all over again, we're just going to look at this. Well, when I'm looking at this, I can do a couple of things. And the first thing that I'm going to do is look at all of these to the right. What do they have in common? Well, they have a not z. So I'm going to factor that out. I'm going to write out the first part, not include it. And then we're going to have our not z like this. And then inside of here, we are going to have our x naught times y plus the x times y naught plus our x times y. So this is going to be our new equation. Inside of here, there's a few things that we can do. And instead of rewriting out this entire thing, I'm just going to solve for them by parts individually. So I'm looking at this part. We can factor out the x here, and then inside of here we'll have a y naught plus a y. Well, a y naught plus a y, if we look in here, is just 1. So from this, we are going to get a 1. That means we have an x naught times a y plus our x. So this is all we're going to have left inside of our z naught. Well, if we look back up here, we can use this. And then if we use that, we are just going to get an x plus a y. So we'll write this down here e is equal to x naught times y naught times z plus the z naught and then inside of here it's being multiplied by our x plus y and so we have it that is the answer for the e function we've simplified it and now we're going to look at f i've moved some things around just to give us more space but now we're going to be solving for our function f so looking at this, we have our function f here. And well, what I'm looking at is, what can we factor out? We can manipulate our z naught here again. 
So we're going to factor out our z naughts. And then inside of here, we have an x naught times our y naught plus our x naught times y plus x times y naught. And then we have plus x, y, z. We're probably not going to touch this because it looks pretty simplified already. But looking at these equations inside of here, we can factor out the x naught from this first part. So we can factor it out here. We are going to have an x naught, and then inside of here we have a y naught plus y. And then uh, if we look back at the table that we have, we know a y naught plus a y is just a 1. So this is just going to be 1, and this is going to give us an x naught. So we have an x naught plus an x times a y naught. Knowing that this x naught plus our x y naught is our equation, we can look to the table that we have, and we can see that it looks something like this. However, it looks opposite to this. We have the knots in all of the opposite places. So what this tells us is that instead of having a number plus a number, we're going to have not that number plus not of that number. So this is going to give us an x naught plus a y naught. And this is all for everything inside of our parentheses. So now we can rewrite this as f is equal to, we have our z naught, and then inside of here, our x naught plus our y naught, and then we have plus x, y, z. And so that is the answer to this problem. We've solved A, B, C, D, E. Part C um, helped us out with part E, and then part A helped us out with part B. We did have to go through the truth table to find part D, but it was all pretty simple, and that is how you could solve Boolean functions for any given truth table.